is Dan. Take it away, Dan. Oh, it's the pre-show today on here, MMA Junkie Radio, and it's a special one because uh, we may or may not be in your ears, but not necessarily in your viewing eyes because, uh, well, what, 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 what do we got coming up, uh, Ghost? We have Chris Cyborg today, Luis Smolka, and Rick Glenn. Take it from there, Danny. Yeah, and we may have a surprise <laughs> guest because <laughs> I'm not going to say the name, but we're working on somebody right now. Take it away, George. Surprise guest in addition to Chris? No, nah, I think that's what he meant. Oh. Damn it. I kind of screwed that up. Get to the chopper. <laughs> anyway, today's our last show before we take off for the holiday. So we will be celebrating today by playing nothing but Christmas music. Yeah. Danny's lucky that he's established that as his thing. Because now he has a little buffer to buy him time anytime he wants. All he has wow. to do is pop in and either say "Wow" or "Yeah," and that. And depending <laughs> on how long he wants to go with that, so if he goes "Yeah," he could literally sit there and think like, like what the fuck do I do next? and then he jumps into what he wants. You say that like it's he's actually ri- kind of brilliant. <laughs> you say that like he's riding in on a tray. You go <laughs> like Peter Griffin. Yeah, no, I'm like, little, <laughs> I'm like a little sweet. I just kind of glide it, <laughs> little sweet. Oh, a little sweet. He's basically that stripper that pops out of a cake every single time he walks into a room. <laughs> oh, crap. We cooked the cake too long. <laughs> oh, crap. The stripper's in the cake already. The stripper's in the cake. Uh, classic gift. I kind of want a stripper in the what? cake before my time goes. How about you go? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, uh, you guys, you're not caught up on Game of Thrones, but you've watched it, right? Or you've watched any type of like medieval show? Like I'm caught up on it. Uh, Let's say yes to the second thing. All right. Have you ever seen when uh, two in those two times minutes. when they bake a cake mm-hmm. and they put uh, like pigeons in it, like white doves or whatever? The way they release it is uh, they usually somebody takes a sword and they slam it into yeah. the cake and yeah. then they come out, right? But they always like fuck up one of the birds in the process and then there's blood and guts all over the cake. I've never understood that. I didn't get that either, and that, that kind of leads me to my bigger point about medieval movies. This is my issue, guys. I will not take a medieval movie seriously. I'm taking a stand until one of them shows some goddamn friendly fire. You're telling me that we can be shoulder to shoulder in a battlefield, swinging all sorts of axes and swords and arrangement, and you know, Gigi's not going to swing back and hit me, or you know, you're not going to swing back and hit Gigi. You know, when you go hit one guy, like the hardest I've been hit in street fights, guys, were punches that weren't meant for me. Like, I mean, if that's happening with fists, how is that not happening with maces and clubs? Don't they say in? Uh <laughs> In war, like, at least half of the casualties are friendly fire. Yes! How is it not more so in those days? Come on up in a minute. I, I, I'd imagine that it's probably just, like, well, Glenn's dead, so let's not, uh, <laughs> not talk about him. Wait, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> With the friendly fire, oh, like, yeah. you nev- they never show any friendly fire, because it's just like, alright, well, all these people were lost. Okay, Glenn died. Uh, Let's just not say that it was because Steve accidentally <laughs> swung back too far with his axe when he was trying to kill an enemy. I guess in a movie that would be kind of a I'm shitty like way for a good He could have picked better medieval names than <laughs> Steve Glenn. and Glenn, right? <laughs> yes! Like Thor or something like that. Glenn is definitely a guy you put on the front line in those days, right? <laughs> hey, is Chaz okay? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I am, am for Chaz making it through the war. <laughs> and it was named Chaz in medieval time deserves to live. I'm going to pretend. Here comes the fiercest gladiator of them all, Skyler. (laughs) 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 This is your captain speaking. We are making our descent into Las Vegas McGarren Airport. On behalf of our crew, we'd like to thank you for flying MMA Junkie Airlines. Now please fasten your seatbelts and put your tray tables in your upright position because the descent is going to be a little bit bumpy. (laughs) Hi, Junkie Nation. It's time to roll, baby, on MMA Junkie Radio with gorgeous George and Go. This is what we do and why we do it, baby. All night long. We roll it! Yes! The MMA Junkie Radio Revolution is upon us. Can you dig it? There's no escape. No escape. Through the vast frontier of cyberspace and through a sea of stars in outer space. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've solidified our combat communication stranglehold. We are controlling transmission. 
With the use of MMA Junkie Radio and Sirius XM Satellite Radio Technology. MMA Junkie Radio. Commence transmission. Live from MMA Junkie Radio HQ in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Go. From the fight capital of the world, inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay Race and Sportsbook, you are listening to the MMA Junkie Radio Show, the only show that matters. I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, is the devious and dastardly Goes, Ari's co-host, our newest addition, Dan Tom, sitting to my left. He's sitting to my left. He's the fight analyst. And back east, handling all the producing duties, our talented producer, Danny Otto. What's up, guys? What up, everybody? Last show before we all take off for the holiday. This is true. This is true. However, we're not leaving you empty-handed. You'll get some original programming if you tune in to uh, SiriusXM. You know, they have our show on the app, and we are played at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and 8 a.m. Eastern Time the next day. You will get some original content shows. Uh, You might get one replay, but I I know we've banked at least four hours of original programming so should be pretty cool and then we'll be back on the 26th tuesday the 26th and we will prepare for uh, fight week ufc 219 speaking of ufc 219 we have a couple guests from that fight card rick glenn and lewis smoka they will be on the show today they're going to be on in the second hour so we have time to take some calls 866-522-2846 smoka will be uh competing against mateus Nicolau, a uh, couple of flyweights going at it there, 125 pounds. And Rick Glenn will be fighting Miles Jury. And those are featherweights. So we may have one more guest from that fight card. It's looking pretty good, but I don't want to jinx it just yet. So we'll just leave that alone for now. Again, 866 522 2846. Yeah, I mean, they were reaching out to me, confirming the time and number. So we'll see. Hell, if uh, it's uh, 35% rain, I'll probably take out an umbrella. You would? You know, I haven't taken out an umbrella in, in a while because unless I'm really out there getting soaked, then I need it. But otherwise, even if I don't have the garage and I just go uh, house to car, car to work, uh, a couple drops don't really bother me. It's got to be like a, a monsoon for me to like really worry about it. Have I already told you about the world's worst umbrella? No. In college one time, in between like classes. A newspaper? No. I had an umbrella. And not only did I have an umbrella... I took two females to shield them from the rain who didn't have umbrellas. And I mm. open up my umbrella and we start walking. The next thing I know, I'm getting wet. And I look, it was one of mom's umbrellas. And I had the handle in my hand. And that is all. Because <laughs> it detached with the wind. And the umbrella <laughs> went flying. And I just had the handle like that. Like a, like the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> like a torch without a torch. <laughs> oh, that's great. Umbrella is another one of those friendly fire objects that I was talking about during the pre-show that I could see, you know. Affecting the people around you if you're not too careful. <laughs> Opening it up. What happened to it? It just flew away? It flew. I went and I chased it. And I grabbed it. And then it looked like you just Did the girls stick around? No, they took off. They didn't want anything to do with it. But Did they I get have a good giggle at you? I don't know. Because th- they all reacted so... Like, it was raining really hard. Mm-hmm. So, I think they just kind of went like, ah. And they just took off and did their thing. So, I went. I grabbed it. I put it back together. When I went back into the class, we had another break. And my teacher, the professor, she was walking out. So, I did the same thing. And I go, hey, you want to get under the umbrella? And she goes, I don't know. She goes, I saw what happened to you earlier. <laughs> so I think a lot of people saw it. Cozy mm-hmm. Poppins. Do you have one now? An umbrella? No. Yeah. No. Either do I. Do and, you? and you're right. That's probably the last I time I used to I always ca- carry one around with me when I lived in New York because you get off, uh, you go in like on one train stop when you come out. It looked sunny when you went in, and when you come back from underground, it'd be raining where you're at. Like, what the heck? How long did you live there again? I only like eight months. Oh, okay. Went back and forth a lot before that, but but only uh, living and working there. I liked I liked it there. I was there for about five days, and it was pretty cool, especially the later start time. Mm-hmm. And uh, Danny and I hung out, and like we had a nice little routine. We did the show, he did some production. I checked emails, then we grabbed a drink and a bite to eat, and then we still felt like we had time to do some bullshit before he uh, had to hop on on the bus back to Jersey. But the later start time just made it so that it was. Uh, you could get a workout in in the morning or a brisk walk or a good breakfast, take yeah. care of a few things. and um, Or even if we went hard the night before, just know that 
<laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, at worst, you could wake up, I guess, at noon, quick shower, and start heading that way. Um, I mean, for Danny, it's a little bit more. Danny, how long does it, how long does it take you to get to work? Um, <clears throat> give or take the time, uh, anywhere from 35 minutes to over an hour. Okay, yeah. The only thing I regret was not we were going to go see the Statue of Liberty mm -hmm. and we were going to try and take in a Yankee game. Those are the two things I I haven't done those. We either. didn't get a chance to do. I wish we had do. done either one of them. Yeah, I know. Like, I haven't been to the new Yankee Stadium and I've never been to the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. So next time we've got. Well, to what I didn't realize is the boat stopped going like at two. So yeah, I thought it was one of those where like five or six. Big deal if it's fucking. I mean, they have those powerful lights. So big deal if it's if it's uh past dusk. Even out I, I don't goes see the problem with that. I mean, how much is there really to see? Oh, there it is. You know, and I guess I'm not sure if at the time they were doing the trips up to the to the crown or whatever. But yeah, that kind of snuck up on us. So we would have had to. I think must have been a little bit past two, or maybe it was a day we had. I don't know what we were gonna do, but um, next thing you know, just we lost a little bit of interest. I guess, or I did, and Danny really wanted to go. Which would you? Which one do you regret more, though? Excuse me? Which one do you regret more, Yankee Stadium? Or no, Yankee actually, Stadium? believe it or not, the um, Statue of Liberty. However, if the old Yankee Stadium was around, I, I really wanted one. to go to that one. I really did. I felt like a lot of history had happened there. That, one, that one was awesome. Yeah, yeah, so I didn't get a chance to go to that. So if it was between the old one and the Statue of Liberty, like if you told me, hey, this season was their last, then that would be the bigger regret. But because we're a few seasons past that, I'd like um, to do it was... Uh, the Statue of Liberty. Man, my I, I, my I concur. My yeah. monuments must be different than you guys because my, my, my New York monuments actually came up in my Facebook memories. And it was like I visited places like, uh, you know, the, the Varick Street Fire Station where they filmed Ghostbusters and like, oh, <laughs> like, like the library where they come out of the Ghostbusters one and then stuff like that. You know, again, Dan Tom and his 80s reference movie. No, a but tour like that would be fun. You, I, 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 you learn a lot from those tours. Uh, Seinfeld. They're Banner very Banner. underrated. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They're, those are very underrated. They, they like plan them out. Stuff. And if you give them 60 or 80 bucks and you hop on with the 50 other yahoos, yeah. you know, they'll take you around and and basically, you know, you don't have to pull over and put on the hazards or tell the taxi or Uber guy, pull over here right. and, or, you know, nothing. I mean, base, there's even one where you're sitting just staring one direction. And so the tours made, I guess, a bunch of all they do is right turns mm -hmm. and they yeah. line you up so that you're already sitting facing the street. So the seats are turned 90 mm -hmm. degrees. Nice. And uh, I thought that one was pretty unique. I, I was going like to try that one. Hills one. The Stars one? I think that one's dumb. It's basically a tour of people's gates because yeah. the houses are so big and the gates are so big in the front. You can't really see I what's only going used on. to stop. I only used to see somebody selling s a map of the No, stars. they have like a, it's like a, the like TMZ? a TMZ type style. Bus. Yeah. Not TMZ, though, but they take you. I mean, this is years ago. Right. You've done it? Yeah, I've done this. But mm -hmm. they take you, and all you see are like the giant gates. And you're just oh, like yeah. Like, That's Eddie Murphy's house. And you're like, really? Right. Well, now they have apps that'll tell you. You like want to jump in his bed or <laughs> yeah. well, take no, a shower? I mean, uh, at least Billy like. Bee? I just wish you could at least maybe at least see the house yeah. right, or something. <laughs> but it's they're all they all have big trees. They all have a giant gate. I so bet you it's just. They have those stalkers, you know? Yeah. Those big yeah. timers, they yeah. have stalkers, and I think people will just start to push it, like, look, this is me with a selfie, you know? Um, <laughs> let's just say he has some sort of a statue, and That's then someone's humping the statue, then they <laughs> tag the statue, then they knock it, then they steal <laughs> it. It just goes on and on and on, and I think they just have to probably put a limit on it. The original house from the Goonies, I wanted to go visit it, and they used to let you go up and take pictures. But they had to put these tarps over now because um, the owner of the house would actually even let you come in and tour oh the house if you wanted. What? But she said that people were just rude. They just kept leaving like cups and, and trash I and bet. cigarette buds. And so she was like, I'm just tired of picking up after everybody's shit. Mm. Um, the, the house where Tom Cruise had lunch with the girl from Risky Business? No. Uh, Top Gun. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Charlie. Charlie. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. We drove by that house. It's abandoned now. It's an oceanside. Abandoned. It's abandoned. Yeah, like uh, it's just boarded up. But there is a note that says there, you know, that this is the house. And you, when you look at it, you're like, that. That's it. That was a weird scene for me because Maverick. Not only is he late. He wants to take a shower and then throw on the same nasty clothes he was just in, and she's not having it at all. Like she didn't even think about it. She's just like, no. I'm hungry. We're going to eat right now. That was like a weird date. Yeah, I think I'd rather stay sweaty just in my clothes than 
go get clean and then throw on the sweaty clothes, right? Yeah. The I mean, I guess you could just free ball it and do without the boxers <laughs> and just <laughs> put the jeans back. But, I mean, he was diving in the sand in those jeans. Yeah. Remember they playing true. volleyball? He had no yeah. plan. Like, he didn't plan out the And the, the t-shirt like had to have been a little sweaty. I got it. Oh, no, no. He, he, he didn't wear a shirt. So, unless he was able to just clean up but um yeah well, I he was super saying. late right like he had he literally had no game maybe his game day. was to jump in the shower and then just <laughs> maybe he hopes she jumps in the shower with him and maybe have have dessert afterwards and i don't know if you noticed but charlie's not really dressed up either she's just wearing like a yeah. big old giant t-shirt like she just woke up at somebody's house that date was a wreck yeah, yeah. So, so, so something was awry there <laughs> <laughs> um I once took a bus tour in Edinburgh, Edinburgh, in Scotland. Nice. Yeah. I couldn't believe how much I learned. Like, e- either the country <laughs> of Scotland or the city of Scotland, <laughs> they actually were the ones that um, started taxing people, and then other, you know, other countries, you know, started using taxes. Uh, they showed us where Georgie Porgy. <laughs> originated from <laughs> really yeah like there was a lot of history what you know we like just georgie page. porgy i guess it was i georgie mean i don't you know put in pop you remember yeah. georgie porgy putting in pie kiss the girls and made him cry yeah. you know all that i guess whoever georgie porgy was somehow the well, that was his house or the guy that wrote the poem you know was there i just remember we did a lot and i remember me and my dad were looking at each other going damn like we actually learned a lot that that i you know that you either had heard or, or whatever and they took us. They have like an underground city there as well. There's a castle. There's a this. There's a that. Some good facts. Like I felt like I learned a lot uh, from there. Whereas when we did a tour in London, we were a little lazy. We got there, and that night we wanted to do something, and so we. I just paid a taxi driver like I think a hundred pounds, and I go just drive us around and point to shit, you know. <laughs> point to shit. And uh, so he did. <laughs> And he showed us like five things, but mm-hmm. you know, um, it was dark, really not much to do, and our parents liked it, but it was like, there's Big Ben, and right. the London Bridge, Probably. and the Tower Bridge, and whatever, and that's it, you know? Um, the bus was like, we learned about 30 things, you know, and, and uh, you know, so I, I, I really recommend it, those, those buses. I think it's called the red bus, the fun bus, or something. I it's like a chain of them. I right. did a bus in Scotland too. I was gonna just ask you real quick. Was it a creepy? Uh, was it a creepy Scottish guy doing your tour bus? I did an Edinburgh tour bus as well. Did you? And the guy was like super, super creepy. In fact, he was wearing a kilt, and then he wore jeans about halfway through. When we were coming back from Loch Ness, and uh, I actually caught it on tape because I was recording a blog. And he's like, "I hate to change into these jeans. It's a bit windy out here. This little girl is a mess." Because I guess his kilt blew up in front of a girl. He's like, "I'm gonna get old to the trouble." And he put his like jeans on. He was a sketchy dude, but That's it was weird. it was a fun it was a well, fun tour. No, this was just a, a normal <laughs> cat. I have a gun to your head. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Somebody lands in Vegas, says, here's 100 bucks, take me to five things. I did that already well, once. What would you do? I did that with Re- Dwayne and Regina. Where'd you take them? Oh. In fact, I may have, I don't remember if I if they paid or if they didn't. If they did, thank you again. If they didn't, no big deal. But this was a MMA gym. No, no, we just, did. just Vegas. Oh, just Vegas? Okay. Yeah. Um, just Vegas. Uh, uh, is this MMA? Not MMA related at all. No, you can you can add MMA. I mean, and am I driving or is this walking? No, you're driving people. So guy, same. You're. It's just flipped. The guy got out. He goes, "Hey man, here's a hundred bucks. Just take me me five things. Take me things." Um, the first thing I would do, especially if it's nighttime, I love it when our family and friends land at night, and they've never been here. The first thing I do is pick them up and take them right down the whole strip. Mm-hmm. It's just a really, it's a sight to behold, you know, because there's so much activity and there's so much to look at, you know. So one would be a trip down the whole strip. Two would be, uh, since I'm already committing to it being nighttime, mm, I pr- you know what I'd probably do is I'd probably go, and there is the strip <laughs> once we get to Sahara. And then go, now number two will be the stratosphere, you know, and <laughs> feel like I can knock out a few things there. There's a great view. There's some rides up there. A uh, great steakhouse. So then that's number two. Number three, I think at this point at nighttime, I'm committed to Fremont because I'm already in that area. Fremont Street. And four and five. Fuck, it's nighttime. Um, go to D Street. Like the last D place, you, last place Street? you want to go. Last place you want to go. No, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I guess at that point, um, check out the 1923 bar, I'd say, you know. There you go. At Mandalay Bay. <laughs> All right. 
and, or yeah, at Mandalay Bay. And then the last thing would be, um, is uh, he paying for everything? Because I'll I take him to a he, show if he's paying. Doesn't he work at Mandalay Bay? It's a little lazy to me, but all right. Well, because <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I, feel, <laughs> I feel like the Shark Reef's closed. I I, I want to pocket the hundred. Yeah, yeah, no, you you're not gonna pay. He's for taking it. care of everything. Yeah, he takes care of everything. Oh fuck it, let's grab a sh let's get a show then. I take him to just one of the Cirque shows. That's, that's well, happening. Well, I meant more. This is what I was thinking. All right, like you guys brought up some good ones. Uh, I thought you take him to see the Bellagio fountains, right? I think that's yeah, I blew a big it. One. I should have done that one. And then um, either the Stratosphere or the Eiffel Tower. You know, one of those. Go two. up. Yeah, and then see, I wasn't I sure if this was a driving thing or if we could kind of get off. So, it, um, yeah, a little bit of both, right? And then. Uh, Fremont was a good one. I think that's that one's important. But I would start off with Red Rock Canyon and just do that little drive yeah. through. Yeah, if it was a daytime thing, I committed to the night. Right as it's. I thought Hoover was yeah. a good, uh, good one too. I Hoover thought Dam. about that, but I thought maybe that's too far. No, nah, it's only uh, forty-five up and back. And then, Sounds like uh, we have the whole day. I was gonna end it with the Neon Museum, right? Because now you get to see like the old downtown. Vegas I've never been there. Have you? Like, yeah, it's cool. I've never been there. Go at night though. Well, no, I've never been during day. But the I, Mob I, Museum, I, I heard, is good. Yeah, I heard that's. But I heard it takes more than, like. It's supposedly at least two hours, but if you really want to enjoy it, you need to spend some time there. Do you swing by Trop and stop by where uh, Tupac and Shook Knight got uh, got got? That's got an easy one. That's <laughs> an easy one. Yeah, the you can drive by that right. one, right? Somebody like Howie DMP would that enjoy movie? that. No, the Tupac I haven't. Movie? We I haven't. haven't. If you want to watch it, Netflix. Uh, Voodoo. Voodoo. What's it called? All Eyes on Me. Oh yeah, okay. yeah I gotta it's see that. It's weird though, because the guy that plays Tupac sometimes looks a lot like him, and then sometimes. Would they get like Ruthie uh, from Real World? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's like Chili from uh, <laughs> from fucking TLC. It's weird. Like sometimes he really looks like him, and then sometimes he doesn't. Mm. Um. By the way, I'm on episode 37 of Surviving Escobar. Wow. <laughs> oh, you're pushing through strong. Yeah. <laughs> I think what I might do is get to 40 and just enjoy the holidays, and then leave it at that. Um, uh, because it's tough, man. I start to fall asleep a little bit, and then I you don't want to miss anything, so you rewind. Then I fall asleep and wake up. It's episode 41 because they just keep going. I got to backtrack, so it's a bitch. I'm always doing it at night after Juliet goes to bed. But mm. you're excited every time just, you do it? It's just me and the dog. Um, uh, like yeah, you know, yeah, I guys? really like it. I really like it. Dude, I'm an old man. I try to put on something twice. I try to start the Punisher series everyone keeps talking about, and I, I fell asleep for the first ten minutes twice. No offense to the series, I just I think I just was too tired to to try to effort it. Uh, doing the late night watches like you there, Gigi, but you're actually getting progress on yours, huh? I am, dude, um, and I like it, so I recommend it. But it's it's the weirdest thing because when you watch Narcos and your ten episodes are up, and you're like, "Fuck, I gotta yeah, wait a whole year." That's what I like about it. Uh, you know, <laughs> you wait the whole year. And then you just you, you get all ten of them in a weekend, and boom, it's all gone again, mm -hmm. and you gotta wait again. Um, but here every episode, when you hear the music, you're just getting in. You're like, hell yeah, you're happy you're doing right. What you're doing. I don't know if thirty-seven episodes I could do that. It's every sixty. Single time. I'm only on thirty-seven. Oh, yeah, dude. I don't 37 know. Thirty-seven. So the way to, the way I should have done it, Same. I should have done ten. Think about how you feel when this is playing. No, I hear you. I'm not complaining. But when it's over, you're not happy. You have to wait a year, right? No, but afterwards, I mean, you're. Because you don't you're get very it. happy that you know you did what you did. You did right, that and that time. happened in September. But right now we're in December. You got nine whole months before the next Narcos. I know, but I just feel like if there were thirty or sixty episodes of Narcos, I don't know that I would be as into every single one. Like I'd feel it. I mean, unless like are they all cliffhanger? Like every episode's great, or they're all pretty good. And they introduce a lot of characters, so uh, yeah, you know, and and it's pretty funny because they're talking shit, but. Here's the thing. What I should have done was watch 10, take a few weeks off, and then go, whoa, it's Christmas again. Watch 10 more, take a month off. Oh, what do you know? Now we're in January. 10 more, and then slowly, instead of trying to like go through this journey where I'm, I'm trying to get through it too fast, because it, it, it is a little bit of a burnout. Mm -hmm. Every episode is pretty good. Their song isn't as catchy as this one. It's a great song. Yeah, but good. either way, uh, and, and Netflix gives you the thing to just skip, so you're skipping because you just want to get to it. But uh, yeah, it's 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 not bad. I can't believe Colombian slang though. How quick they talk. <laughs> there are times where I'm just missing shit, man. And I usually catch all slang pretty good, but Colombian slang, holy cow! Like it's almost a whole other language. 
Yeah, I like your breakdown of uh, the different languages. Uh, and the only reason why I'm familiar with the Colombian one, I used to date a girl who's half Cuban, half Colombian. So when the families get together, you just see the complete different styles of the Cuban Spanish to the Colombian Spanish, which is kind of completely different. I was, I'm, I'm pretty ignorant to that stuff, so it was kind of eye-opening. But that show does a different good job. Different dialects, yeah, different accents, the speed. You know, Cubans speak really fast. And Colombians, when they're speaking slang, same thing. I mean, they're all, like, talking super, super fast. Yeah, the way they kind of bleed or connect their words or, you know, uh, slop for a better word. Not not in a negative, but kind of we'll slop them together in a sense, you know. And it's, it's like, they yeah, you got to flow. I think Spanish is the easiest language where if you don't know it, but you're looking at somebody speaking it, you can kind of gauge what direction they're going in. As where, like, when you hear somebody speak Russian, it just sounds angry the whole way through. Mm-hmm. And they could be just saying, like, oh, I love putting pops. But there's just so <laughs> that you can't really tell. In, in Spanish, Spanish, like you could tell, like, and they use their hands, their hands, you know, like their body language. Yeah, exactly. Hey, one thing we didn't do was, uh, all right, Danny, we get it. UFC <laughs> on Fox 26. <laughs> it just took place, and we talked about Dos Anjos and Lawler, Emmett and Lawless, Ponzinibbio Perry. We missed out on Teixeira and Sirkinov. Um, and then, of course, there's the others. You know, Marquez got a win over Stewart, Laprise. Caleb, McDessie. So this is your opportunity. Anybody wants to call in, 866-522-2846 to chime in on that. Goes and Dan. And I can just say I, I reviewed these fights. You know, we worked on the rankings yesterday. Um, you know, taleb has got some uh, some nice wins going on. McDessie saved his job, like Goes said. Oh, man. Uh, DeChirico. Wait, I'm not saying that. Yeah, right. DeChirico. DeChirico yep. was a good call by uh, Dan Tom. He was actually talking about that. Uh, that knee put him away. It was a really, really boring fight. Yeah. Until the knee, honestly. Yeah. Jordan Mean was a beast. Um, he really, really put it on Eric Silva. Uh, and again, you know, so here, here's the bonuses: Marquez and Stewart. That was a great fight. Great. Yeah. Fifty thousand yeah. each there for them. Uh, Taleb and Chirico get the performance of the night. So there's where they spent the two hundred thousand. Blockowitz got the win over uh, Cannoneer. And Glover submitted uh, Misha Serkinov yeah. really quick in the first round. I did not expect that. And Misha Serkinov, when he ha- was mounted mm-hmm. and he was on his stomach, and, you know, you, the first thing you do is kind of cover up. And I think you probably have a count in your head of probably, like, getting hit a couple times on the left side and on the right side yeah. or four on the right side or four on the left side. And then about the time you hear the ref say something like, come on, Misha, I need something out of you. And then you get a couple more, and you're kind of doing the dance, you know. He just sat there. But yet, whatever it took to get to that point, I didn't see where he was just so frozen. And Glover just kind of went, pat, pat, da 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 I think somebody's chimed in and said, hey, do something, that that boom, over. Like, no, you know, no movement at all, no, nothing to turn in, nothing to, I mean, there was just nothing out of him. And I don't think he was done. I, I really don't. I feel like the, there was still something there. So I, I'd love to ask him, hey, did something happen? Did you tear a, uh, a leg muscle? Or, right. or you know, did you really get clocked and you just knew it was it? I've, I've never seen someone so motionless in that position is what I'm trying to say. Usually you're doing something, you know, mm-hmm. uh, just to let the referee know, hey, here's, here's some sort of activity. A thumbs up. Anything would have worked. And in this case, he just laid there. And, and that's not what high-ranked fighters should be doing at this point you know a loss hurts but that's one where if i'm the ma- matchmaker i'm like stick this guy on fight pass like let him no let him get no. over himself and he had a four fight win streak then he took a couple of losses mm-hmm. and or now it's a couple of losses but he could have bounced back i, I don't understand what happened there with Sirkinov. i like Sirkinov, but i really don't understand how he just kind of gave up no real expression either when when he got up off off of him, it was just kind of like. Mm, well, I think right. I tweeted or either weird. told you. I'm like, Glover must be like a someone parking a bus on top of you, and he just couldn't move because there was literally nothing there. Yeah, it, it's tough. Uh, you guys aren't the ones to throw that around lightly, and neither am I. And I completely agree. It was weird body language all around for the reasons you said. And furthermore, let's not forget, even though Sirkinov was doing well on the feet and to, to share wasn't looking great on the feet, Sirkinov's strength on paper is the ground game. That's where he should be mo- most comfortable. So, again, like George said, to not see those movements becomes extra questioning when you factor that in. And, yeah, the body language of the, the shelling, but not hip movement, but almost makes a tapping gesture before the ref called it. It almost looked like two. Again, so it's like you look at where the calories are being spent and where they're not being spent and who the guy is. 
it doesn't really make sense. And yeah, I would like to ask him too, because I too like Sirkin off. And if you listen to his interviews, he's a really sharp, intelligent guy. I like hearing his interviews. So it'll be real interesting to hear his assessment of his performance, his last two. Yeah. Oh. Talib's right hand was one of the most flush punches I've ever seen connect. My goodness. At the end. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Had the cage momentum. Back and boom, we hit him. I was like, I'm surprised his head stayed on. Is it like when they time the upper Tom's time? Tom's got some line? stats, man. <laughs> Tom's got some really good stats that he's been uh, piling up. I think Ponzinibbio might have been the last guy to get him. But I, uh, there you have it. Uh, a day late, but that's UFC on Fox 26 out in Winnipeg. The the crowd seemed like a lively crowd to me. 8,862 in attendance. Total gate of 781,359. We give you guys the bonuses. Um, all the fighters really had nice things to say in their post-fight interviews yeah. uh, in regards to the city and the support from the fans. So I, I imagine it'll be a stop. What, what's Canada good for nowadays? Two? Three is probably a good year, right? Yeah. Three stops in Canada. So if the UFC comes your way, make some noise. You know, Make it so that they are forced to come back the next year. I mean, Winnipeg's battling Edmonton, Calgary, Montreal, Toronto, Nova Scotia, Vancouver, uh, and and Toronto and Montreal are tough to unseat because yeah. they even a bad night is still a great night up there. So uh, if if the UFC's ever coming to your town, you know, you get out there and cheer and get there from the first fight and be active on social media. Hopefully they'll they'll come back. Uh, speaking of those markets, underrated market in my opinion. I actually want them to go back to Korea. Like the the, the vocals in, in that and people that were there on site will say the same thing that it was one of the loudest arenas they were at and that the energy from the, those crowds. So. When did they go there again? Uh, that was uh, Benson Henderson. Was and Benson Mosvidal? 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 Yeah, Benson okay. Mosvidal. I just yeah, want to make yeah. sure you weren't confusing it with the latest place they went to, which, which was Shanghai. No. Yeah, so a few years ago. Yeah, and you know, sport. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> South <been> Korea. <laughs> South Korea is. Um, is uh, oh, y'all look alike. <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying at all. <laughs> is. Um, they, they have great uh, athletes. Yeah. They have a lot of great yeah. boxers. Um, when you watch the Summer Olympics, you usually have the powerhouses like USA, Russia, Germany, France. But South Korea is usually in that top ten. Mm -hmm. You know, they produce good athletes. China, obviously, they produce uh, really, really good athletes. And so I've always thought that if Stun Gun, um, Do Hu Choi, uh, the Zombie, like if they had success. That it would be one of those countries where all of a sudden uh, there was going to be a, it was going to be a pipeline of yeah. fighters. You know what I mean? You're right. In Asia, and then just Yama because of that history. Half Korean too. Yeah, he does. Sexy Yama. He's yeah, half. I think one of the parents is Japanese and one of them is Korean. They're tough people too. Look at they did in L.A. back in the riots in the '90s when everyone's rioting. They're the ones going up on the other their businesses and protecting their businesses with guns and stuff. They're savages, man. They <laughs> they don't they they're down to fight. <laughs> yeah. So I I don't remember that uh, <laughs> arena being loud just because I don't remember the event. It was a few years ago. Yeah. But uh, I do know that they love them some sports. And I've seen oh, yeah. South Korean athletes also in soccer. We had a guy on Manchester United, Park, for many years. He was mm -hmm. beloved by uh, Man U fans because he played his ass off, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's take this commercial. When we come back, we'll talk to Showtime from Tennessee. It'll be his time. <laughs> Anybody else that wants to follow, it's 866-522-2846. It's MMA Junkie Radio on Tuesday, December 19th. This is our last show of the week. We'll take three days off this week, one day off for next week, which is Christmas, and then we'll be back supporting UFC 219. So this will be our last chance to uh, wrap with you about the great sport of mixed martial arts. All right, folks, we'll be right back after this commercial.
They pat down TSA agents because they don't know where those people have been and because they can. They are gorgeous George and Goes. And this is MMA Chunky Radio. Keep that going, Danny. I love that song. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody who's ever listened to the show knows that anytime we say, keep that shit going, I love that song. That's code for, hey, I'm doing something. I need to finish something. I do like that song, though. What's your favorite I mean, I, song? Do you, want, do you want me to give it away, or I can just play it? It's coming later. Oh. Um, all right. I know what, I know I know what, what Dan's dance is, too. Yeah. Mine is uh, coming out of the next break, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's a cover. But I like the cover version better than the original. Well, my favorite, right. my favorite Christmas song comes from my favorite movie, and I'd be impressed if anybody from Junkie Nation has picked up on that yet. Your favorite movie? It, it's an obvious one. I talk on, about it all the hold time. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. You just brought it up today. I don't know about today, but you know, oh, it is in the '80s, like all the movies I reference oh, on this no, year program. No, no. What's the movie you reference today? And I even told you, I go, "Hey, you watch that movie a lot, huh?" It wasn't that movie. Yeah. It wasn't mo- Blood. Nah, that's not the it movie. Something else. It was the movie I've watched more in my entire life ever, and that is Die Hard, 1988, baby. Die Hard. Die Hard. It ages like wine. What for was anybody. the one that you brought up today, though, that I told you? Uh, I brought up, I brought up today Platoon. Platoon, yeah. That's it. Take the pain. Take it. Hi. Hey. What's up? Want to do MMA history today? Yeah, let's do it. Uh. All right. So, uh, George wasn't here when I asked about the name, so George won't know. So, uh, George, I'm going to give you the date. It was December 19th, 2015. Two years ago today. What? December 19th, <laughs> 2001? 15? 2015. Okay. Two oh. years ago today. Oh, I know. Wait. What is it? Yeah, it's Nate Diaz and... Nope. And, um... Nope. It's around the real Michael, jo- Michael Johnson. Didn't they fight around this time yep. in Orlando? Uh, I mean, that is true, but I don't know if that's what Danny's talking about. Yeah, wrong wh- wrong weight class. Okay. Um, I don't know. What else happened that day? Uh, Francis N- uh, Ningano uh, began his reign of destruction in the octagon when he made his UFC debut. Wow, that was just two years I ago? Have a, I have a funny story about this. Let's if hear it. Go ahead. Uh, Danny, k- or d- Danny, do you want to finish what you were going to say about that? Oh, he or? just KO'd... Uh, Luis Henrique. So this was on the Fight Pass prelims. and We I want to thank uh, MMA History Today at MMA yes. History Today for that. Thank you much yeah. for that uh, fine people over there. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I, uh, this was on Fight Pass, and uh, I was actually, this was the last time, I don't know if it was a vacation because I was in, was in Hawaii for a funeral, but I was in Hawaii. I was at a nice brunch spot overlooking this nice sunset, and I just for whatever reason found out that Fight Pass has a mobile app. I know I didn't I didn't realize it until 2015, this card that Danny's talking about, and I'm at this nice brunch with my girlfriend, and I said, you know what, I'm going to see what fights are on. And like, apparently you can stream them from your phone, and she didn't give me crap. She's like, oh, really, that's cool. Let's see what's on. And we go, and we turn on the old Fight Pass on the app on the iPhone, and the first image, it's midway through the fight with Luis Enrique Ningano. It's literally right, but we turned it on right at the moment where he just gets uppercutted into oblivion. <laughs> and I go, I just, I just remember being speechless, and the waitress comes right after that to take our order, and I'm just, I just saw a guy get killed on my phone. And that was that like was six fights ago, right? That was. So he's been, a, he's been a frequent fighter then. Yeah, yeah, and that was my first experience with Fight Pass Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I did find uh, something here, but it's not glamorous at all it just looks like the last high school football rankings for usa today you guys talking to showtime no i was just because you said we're gonna go to showtime when we come back I was oh we haven't we haven't gone to showtime yet no okay we um know. so modern day high school defeated concord de la salle last week concord de la salle won didn't lose a game for 10 years straight yeah yeah and at one point we beat them 55 21 in the state final but we preserved our number one ranking. We finished uh, number one in the country from beginning to the end. Didn't lose a game. Waxed everybody. So that's a really, really m- remarkable year. Number two was the IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. They went 8-0. That's cute. We were 8-0 like in October. We finished 15-0. Uh, Allen, Texas came in at number three at 14-0. and So there you go. That's quite a run, man. I mean, imagine being the best high school team in the country. I mean, just just the best high school team in the state's pretty impressive. And now, just in the country, I mean, that's a lot of high Depends schools. Depends state. It's too bad, like they really don't knock each other off per se. It's just a mythical t- uh, thing. But I'll take it. Shout out to the Lakers who gave Golden State hell 
yesterday. Oh, wow. Shot. And um, that's still and a chance I'm, at the I'm end. I'm proud too. of them, you know, because they're a young team. We're rebuilding with those guys. They're really, really, really young, and this is a team that's. I think won three of the last four or something like that, right? Titles. Was, it, was, it, a, was it a clutch shot they won? Who? Was it a clutch shot, last minute shot that you're referencing that they, yeah. they beat them with? But then like, the Lakers had a shot at the very end, and they could have got something out of it, but they didn't. Dude, they, they're the best at that. I mean, they've had like generations of these guys, you know, uh, Van Exo, and then after that was Derek Fisher. Like, if you were ever r rooting against the Lakers and you were like, oh, this is a crucial point, that's exactly when Derek Fisher was going to nail that three pointer and just kind of crush your, crush your, crush your goals. We have some of those guys, but they're not automatic. Like, okay. it's over, you know, nothing like, like a Reggie Miller where you. You're calling a Mr. Clutch or anything, right? But they're getting there, you okay. know. And I like again. I mean, I, it's a loss, but we competed. Uh, it was a big night because that was the night Kobe's uh, numbers were retired. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, yeah, you know, we're I don't even know, think we're 500 at all. Jesus but Kobe. it's still they're playing exciting ball. Last year, we were we weren't 500 at all, you know, either. But we were just getting mopped up. We weren't really getting better. Uh, the front office made stupid decisions, but. Right. Eh, that's not that interesting. Hey, Cyborg might be calling now, Danny, just so you know, okay? Uh, keep an eye on the line. Um, also, on the way there, I saw a guy that looked like Joe Carr, who used to work for the UFC. Remember he came yeah. here in the studio? Well, Joe Carr, hats off to you, sir. Um, <laughs> he's that dating it? that Luciana Andrade. Mm. I saw that picture. They were in Hawaii. I was like, hey, nice, you know? That interview had a shelf life of like a week and a half, didn't it, or something and like that? And then he quit? Yeah. yeah. But Luciana's been in our studio as well. So, um... Looks like they're a couple, so good for him. They're both. I met them both, and they're both nice people. So, nice. You know, good on them. I, I wonder if that had anything to do, to do with moving on and having to quit I or anything. So. I, I doubt it. Yeah, he seemed like a pretty sharp guy. Um. Anyway. Cyborg's there. All right. So there you go. So we'll we'll keep talking about the other stuff. But for now, let's introduce the UFC featherweight champion. She'll def be defending her world title at uh, UFC 219. This takes place on December 30th. And, of course, it is the headline bout. And one other thing. First of all, uh, shout out to Cyborg Nation. Uh, we'll be seeing many of you because this is one of these locations where you can bring uh, a teddy bear. And uh, Team Cyborg will scoop them up after the event and deliver them to the Sunrise Children's Hospital. So bring those teddy bears by. And you can bring those by on... Uh, December 28th or the 29th, we'll be here from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. and uh, you know we'll we'll stock them up for uh, Team Cyborg, and we'll make sure they get put in the hands of a uh, of a kid out there in Sunrise Children's Hospital. So that's very cool that they included us. Cyborg, how you, Chris Cyborg, how you doing? It's great to talk to you. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you. Good morning, everyone. And I'm really happy to be here to talk a little bit about my fight, and I very appreciate. All my fans, Cyber Nation fans, and let's let's do. We're gonna fight together December 30th, and we're gonna fight together. Make kids smile too with uh, Ted Bear. They're gonna be amazing. Yeah, that's that's really a great thing. We'll talk about the fight in just a second, but the, the Teddy Bears, uh, you and and, and uh, Team Cy you know the rest of Team Cyborg will be delivering them to Sunrise Children's Hospital. Um, I wanted to ask you. The teddy bear, is that something from your childhood that you remember? Were you, you know, did you get a teddy bear and that's why you wanted to make it a teddy bear? Or, uh, I'm just curious about that. I don't know because we have a lot of, a lot of kids and a lot of ages and they really, I think the teddy bear, I think everybody really loves to have one. And I think, I think it's a big show of love for them, you know, and then they have a high time now and then, you know, fight for the healthy. And I think it'd be an amazing thing for we can have together being everywhere you're going and you, you know some people want to drop off at the station please maybe take take one selfie if it's that bad and tag me you know i think you, I, I always like to you know support other kids in the hostel and i always try to visit them and make them smile and make them happy i think you change yourself when you do that you are so and right very, yeah you are yeah. so right a, a teddy bear makes anybody happy you know what i mean they got these big yeah. teddy bears at yeah. costco and uh, I see adults grabbing onto those teddy bears. So that was a great idea. Uh, and, and this is great that you guys uh, are doing this for Sunrise Children's Hospital. Again, we will be here, myself, Goes, or Dan, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Thursday and Friday, December 28th and 29th. So drop off that teddy bear. And like Cyborg says, take a selfie, tag her in it. She'll retweet it. And, 
and uh, we'll make sure those teddy bears land in the in the uh, appropriate hands out there at Sunrise Children's Hospital. Uh, all right, so Cyborg, uh, you're on your way to a, a luncheon, right? With to meet with the media out in L.A. Yes, yes. I just left the radio and then going to to lunch with all media and talk about my next fight. Yeah. Do you like it better when they talk about like preparations or the fight itself? Uh, what do you enjoy talking about the most on fight week? Uh, you know, it's always the same question. What are you going to do? What do you think about? You know, uh, I really like you to because you can answer a lot of questions. The fans want to know. You know, the fans just just want, love to hear you. And then we really look excited about my next fight. Right. And I always like to talk, talk you know, how's I training, how's I feeling. I think I think all my fans like to hear that. You know, and then. And then I'm here because my fans, and you know, my fans did everything for me to be here. They had the opportunity to defend my belt now in UFC, and yeah, I just be thankful. So let me ask you something about your fans. Uh, do fans give you gifts? Can, what, what's a cool gift that a fan has given you in the past? Um, I think it always been, been asking for the picture, and now I never say no for them. I think it, uh, a lot of things happened in my career, and then, and the, all the opportunities I had because my fans really fighting for me. Mm-hmm. And for, for me, just they smile for me and they make them happy and make them excited for my fight. This is always make me happy one of them. Do they bring you gifts? Uh, sus fans try presente para você? Um, I don't know. I don't have so many letters. I think I receive a lot of letters. And okay. Then, you know, then, then, then send me and say how much I motivate them. And how much then then make it then overcome the problems when they see struggle in my career, oh, and wow. you know then say about my faith too, you know then then start to be close to Jesus, close to God because of my faith. I think you know I, we here for be light for the people, you know, and then and then this is when they send a letter for me and say something sweet like this, make me really smile. That is cool to hear that you have fans that, that say that you're motivating for them. You know what I mean? And think about it. You and a lot of the other uh, females that are fighting right now, you guys are, have inspired a lot of young girls that in a few years will be the next generation. So, you know, you guys are definitely pioneers in mixed martial arts for women. Yeah, you know, this sport is just grow, we're gonna grow and growing. But you know, not just people from MMA. I think it's from all the sports. You know, all the work. You know, I always have some struggle, but you know, have to handle it and then keep it, keep going. You know, no quit. And I was the hard work. You know, but the blessing gonna come. And I think, I think just so then you know, never give up. Let's keep going. And it'll be hard, yeah. But you know, you're gonna get in better, and then everything gonna be challenge yourself. You can challenge yourself for getting better and better. And I think you know, this is really. It. Really, I appreciate all my fans about that. Chris Cyborg, our guest here on MMA Junkie Radio. She defends her belt uh, on December 30th when she competes versus Holly Holm at UFC 219. Get that pay-per-view. And by the way, the tickets are really cheap for ra- uh, ringside for Las Vegas prices. 500 gets you there, and I believe there's still tickets available. So check it out. And if you can't make it to Vegas, buy that pay-per-view. There's going to be some great fights. Not just Chris Cyborg and Holly Holm, but Habib Nurmagomedov returns against Edson Barbosa, Jimmy Rivera versus John Lineker. All right, goes. what do you have for Chris Cyborg? Chris, when it comes to Holly Holm, how do you feel she stands out against the other opponents that you faced? Is she very different in her style? And, you know, all the fights in Holly, she's, uh, of course, she's very different than all my opponents. You know, she's, she's having more uh, experience in the, in the tag in the ring, and she's run a lot. And, you know, I think she's, she's, she has a different style than all my op- opponents. And I respect her, but, you know, I'm going to do my best over there and try to catch her as when I can. You know, Chris, uh, everybody would want a perfect night where you could go in there, maybe throw, throw one punch and, and be done with it and have a victory with, with, with no damage done. But if it were up to you, do you do you kind of want this fight with Holly to go longer to show all your skills? Because uh, I don't I don't know if, uh, you know, w- w- the, the, the average fan has gotten to see the breadth of your skills yet. And, you know, I think, it, I think this fight is going to be a great opportunity for me to show more my game and to show, you know, Cyber uh, just can KO, but she can support me too. And then I have five rounds to finish the fight. Uh, I was, I think, like I want to go inside cage. I want to feel and you know and see what 
what's going to happen. And, but I have five rounds to finish, you know. I don't need to rush my rush. But if I have the opportunity to finish soon, I will, you know. But this is not something, it's a pressure. The five rounds, you know, I do my best I can and try to get it quicker. You know, another thing that's going to be pretty cool, Chris, is you fought all over the world. I mean, you fought in a stadium, for crying out loud, out in Brazil. So I know you had some great moments. But in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, you've only fought one time. This will be your first time under the UFC. How special is that fighting in Las Vegas, the fight capital of the world? Uh, you know, everything is really special. I think it's a special fight that I did in my career so in Brazil, my city, Curitiba, only back after 10 years. And all the crowd, you know, with me, and then I think this is very really special in my career. I, I, I think it was going to be amazing too, you know. And I'm very excited about it to be a big card and to be end of the year. And I'm very blessed, and thankful for FC giving this opportunity. Thank for all my team, and let's do that. Okay, Chris, we got one last question that came in from our fans. They want to know. Can people only drop off teddy bears, or can they drop off other to uh, toys that for the kids? Uh, do you know? Uh, you know, you ask for teddy bears, but if you have other gifts, you know, no problem. I think you just, you're going to make your own kids smile, you know, and for sure, you doing this and anything you're going to do for help, it's uh, welcome for us. All right, there you have it, folks. Cyborg Nation, to participate in the Bear for Kids. You can bring a teddy bear here in Las Vegas to the MMA Junkie Radio Studio, 3950 South Las Vegas nice. Boulevard. We're inside the Mandalay Bay in the sports book from the twenty, the Thursday the 28th or the 29th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Bring all the bears you want. We'll make sure they get the team Cyborg, and they will make sure they are in the hands of some kids at Sunrise Children's Hospital. Thanks, Chris, for the time. We really appreciate it. I hope you have fun at the luncheon, and we'll see you next week in Las Vegas. Yes, thank you. See you soon. Bye, guys. Okay, bye-bye. All right, folks, that's the world champion at 145 pounds in the UFC, the featherweight division, Chris Cyborg, one of the greatest fighters ever in women's MMA, possibly the greatest women's fighter Uh in the history of women's MMA, bar none, any division. Uh, that one's up for debate, you know. Uh, a lot of people have their favorites all over the place, but um, <laughs> she's been pretty destructive oh, yeah. throughout her career, that's for sure. And she hasn't lost in a long time. Good fight they got there versus Col uh, Holly Holm for UFC 219. Can't wait for it. We'll be right back after this break. It's MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM, Rush 93.
Sirius XM has your chance to win a trip to the UK to see Billy Joe live at Old Trafford Football Ground, home of Manchester United. It's Billy's first performance at the iconic stadium. You can watch it from the front row. No additional purchase necessary to enter to win. For official rules, go to SiriusXM.com slash Billy Joel Manchester. Do that before January 2nd, 2018. Want to thank uh, Chris Cyborg for her time here in the first hour. Caught up with her, and uh, it's very cool to participate with Cyborg Nation in uh, receiving those teddy bears. They needed a spot somewhere in the UFC. I think they're going to have a couple others, by the way. And um, But this is one of them, and at least we've committed to Thursday and Friday. We're here anyway, and uh, we want to help out. So uh, thank you to them for involving us, and a big shout-out to Ray Elb for uh, helping to line that interview up. All right, so as you can tell, we're just right up against the, uh, the clock here. We're going to take one more commercial. When we come back, we'll have a run of calls. Showtime from Tennessee. Brandon from Louisville. Sam All Jam. If you want to join in on the queue, it's 866 866- 522-2846. After that, we'll have a couple interviews. Uh, Louis Smoka, Rick Glenn, also fighting on the same fight card. That's headlined by uh, Chris Cyborg. So it should be some great conversations with those guys. We'll be right back after this break. Fell down on cars. Here we go. Not trying to be Mr. Scrooge here, but I don't know when the song ends. 
<laughs> it's only got about another minute and Oh, is that seconds. it? Yeah, usually those yeah. Christmas jingles, you, they go pretty quick, but I wasn't sure. All right, uh, let's get to the phones. 866-522-2846. If you want to join in, we'll start off with Showtime in Tennessee. What's up, Showtime? It's your time. Hey, what's going on, fellas? Not much in you. Man, just another day in paradise, man. Working, trying to wrap this week up. Haven't done much shopping. I'm going to try to do a little bit online today. You don't like to get out to the stores? Online? You better have Prime or something. No. Yeah, yeah. You're running out of time to get that delivery. Yeah, everything I everything I order will be overnight. Nah, man, I don't like really going out to stores, man, and dealing. With, Why dealing not? With everybody. Hey, nah, man, I don't really like all that, man. I don't like people that grabbing stuff and fighting over stuff and all that. I don't really like that. Doesn't like that. happen. That that only happens literally on Black Friday at a Walmart. I mean, honestly, I've shopped for. I mean, when did I start working? Sixteen. I'm forty eight. 30-some years, no one's grabbed anything out of my hand. or uh, I've, I've I, seen it happen. You have? Yeah. Did, yeah. Were you there on Black Friday? or No, just regular Christmas. I mean, I'm there on like the Christmas. 23rd, the 24th, the 18th. I, I, I've never really yeah, dealt like with that. There's only one more iPad or that sort of thing. I've seen people. And people are like this, pulling yeah, yeah. back and forth? Yeah, I got it first, that sort of thing. Wow. I've seen it quite a few times. <laughs> well, imagine what are the odds, though, right? Yeah, yeah but if you don't well, like yeah, it, you don't like it, right? I know, but I'm saying, like, does it hold you back from shopping again? Me, no. I guess what I'm getting at show Showtime is, are you kind of like a little antisocial, or you really just don't like the Christmas time shopping? I don't, but see, like, normally, it's early for me right here. Normally, I'm that guy that's out on Christmas Eve. You know, if the mall me closes too. at <laughs> 6, I'm out at 2.33, you know, and shit is hectic then, man. It's almost like mini Black Friday, because you got people that, that you know, and they're going to be in the doghouse if they don't get that last item. So I guess that's why it's kind of crazy. Showtime. But no, I'm not, in, I'm not in touch, shows. When people get a gift from you, are they usually like, bet this one's coming from Showtime? Or do you kind of lay an egg with Christmas gifts? Be honest with us. Not, well, you know what? Now, man, my I, I have two younger girls, man, but mostly I give, you know, I, I would give my daughter money because they know what they want, you know? I just ask them, hey, how much money do you want? I just give them the money, ask them what they want, and I give them the money to go get it. But I do have to shop for my my two youngest girls. One wants a um, skateboard, some kind of hoverboard, and I'll get her some clothes, some shoes. And my baby girl has so much stuff, I'm just going to buy her clothes. Cause she's the only only child with with plenty of aunts and stuff, so she's spoiled as heck, so she only needs clothes. If you had to buy but George a Christmas eat- gift, what would you give him? Oh, George. That's his way. You know what? Yeah. I would do this. I would. I would do this for both of you guys, man. I would give you guys gift cards to Chipotle. I know I couldn't leave. <laughs> hey, man. At least he knows us. I like that. Oh yeah. Good job, Showtime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, 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 George. One more thing, man. I'm a big Narcos fan too. What show were you talking about? Is that like a Netflix deal you talking about? It's Surviving called Escobar Survi- Surviving Escobar. So. Uh, Narcos, the first two seasons are based on Escobar. Escobar's main hitman mm-hmm. was a guy named Jean Jairo Velasquez Vasquez, but they just called him Popeye. Mm-hmm. He supposedly had over 300 hits in his career, and believe it or not, he's still alive. So he's already done his time. He's already gone past the death threats from other cartels and families who, you know, he uh, obviously put through a lot of pain and suffering because of what he did and. And supposedly he's still alive out there. But, um, you know, some of it is fictional and some of it is accurate. I think they have to mix up the two. But uh, it's pretty interesting. It's called, yeah, Surviving Escobar on Netflix. The problem is, learn from me, man. If you like to binge watch, then maybe treat it as they just drop six seasons of ten episodes each. Because it is 60 episodes. And just say in December I'm going to watch the first ten. In January the next ten. In February the next ten. Because it is a fucking marathon, man. It's grueling. And you can't wait to start the next one. But you're just in this long trap. So, uh, you know, just take it easy. Um, But I think you'll dig it. You know, you can always bail out. I I think a couple episodes in, you know, you'll be like, yeah, yeah, there's some action here. People are getting capped. A couple hot bodies running around. And uh, that's that's how they drew me in. We got to move on, brother. Thanks for calling in, all right? Uh, Merry Christmas. We don't talk to you. 
Okay, Merry Christmas, you guys. All right, see ya. Brand, uh, sorry, Jam, Sam All Jam is next. Sam All Jam, what's up, man? Pennsylvania in the house. Yo, what's good, family? What's going on? He's now, from the Christmas City. Isn't Bethlehem? that what it's called? Bethlehem, yeah, that's right. Yeah, from the Christmas City, that's right. Yeah. Did you do all your so uh, shopping, Sam? Uh, Well, just about. I mean, I got one left, but it's the most important. That's my wife, so. Did you do some hustling on your own, or did you take the uh, lazy route, a.k.a. the Showtime route, and you're just giving out uh, money and gift cards? <laughs> I mean, put it this way, in years past, um, I, I've done that, but no, nah, I keep it, and it's just my immediate family, my mom, my kids, and uh, my wife, and that's it, you know, and Your barber. that's it, really. There you go. You know what I mean? All right. By the way, uh, Netflix has a documentary on that dude Popeye. I just peeped it a couple of months ago. I forget the, the name of it off the top of my head. It's like maybe an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, but that guy, and it's recent. That guy's like a, you know, he just puts out like YouTube videos now. He's on the internet all the time. You know, he's released from prison. And uh, he dude's like a little local legend. And I mean, I don't know. Every time they show him walking the streets of Brazil and or, or Colombia, I mean, and um, he's like, you know, high-fiving people and people shouting him out. So. Damn. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, look, the height of know. Escobar, well, es Escobar died in 93. So let's say the height of mm -hmm. him was probably just before that, late 80s, 90s. I guess maybe we're a generation removed, but you would think that out of the 300 hits, there's someone that's going, I'm, I'm getting this guy, what he did to me, you know, my kids, my family, someone. And somehow this so guy's too. been... He even talked about that. Yeah. He talks about that in the documentary that, you know, he kind of walks around, uh, but he, he tries not to look over his shoulder, you know what I mean? But he realizes that, you know, he's probably got enemies out there, but I don't know. He says that he, the way, and I just saw this a couple of months ago, geez, I wish I remember the title, but, um, he, you know, he was saying how, like, he's on YouTube all the time and on the internet, and he, he's got all this, like, fanfare, like, he receives all this love from people. I'm saying to myself, I don't know, either people are just idiots, or I don't know, I don't know, but... Well, Escobar was kind of like a Robin Hood, where he, he shared yeah, a lot of his riches true. with poor people, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, he's the one that gave orders, but at the end of the day, you know, I don't care how much of a Robin Hood you are, when you're taking people's lives, someone's obviously not, you know, not going to believe in an eye for an eye, you know, uh, uh, yeah. or sorry... To, you know, to look the other way or whatever. They're going to believe in an eye for an eye. But anyway. Yeah. Hey, Sam. Anyway, listen, I, I heard it's the last show to, to before the holiday. I was just calling in to uh, wish everybody Feliz Navidad and Prospero Año Nuevo. And that was it, man. Just to uh, call in and say what's up. And, you know. I heard Dan Tom talking about Luis Enrique. And for some reason, while I was on hold, it made me think about whatever happened to Luis Kane. Whatever happened to that dude? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, uh, a like couple of those guys are it, floating right? around in Italy or Russia. Um, well, let's look it up. I mean, we'll look it up if you want to give well, me a second. While you do that, can I ask Sam a question? Sure, yeah. Sam. Yo. Would you rather, on your next cruise, have Popeye <laughs> house sit for you? Okay. Uh, Popeye, <laughs> Popeye and Mike Rohal, that comes out to the Junkie Gathering, they're just house sitting for you. Or you got to show Wait, wait, head. Mike Rohal is the Army guy, right? No, Mike Rohal is the, the guy that... Oh, no, Mike Rohal is the guy from Houston. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 the guy from so Houston. So those two are watching oh, yeah, the house, okay. or you got to shave your head. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, dude. Oh, it, it's not even close, dude. It's not even close. I I, I pull out the hair clippers for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd never do that. Oh, man. All right, yeah, Sam. Listen, Lewis, Lewis Kane's last fight was April of this year, so... Oh, shit. Uh, he really? lost the fight to Matt Hamill, actually. And he is 36 years old. That animal, that dude's still fighting? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it was F2N fight in Brazil. He's been fighting mostly in Brazil. I take it back. He's not fighting really in, in Russia. Russia brings in a lot of Brazilian athletes. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. All right, brother. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, too. You and all your family. And uh, all right, fellas, yeah, we'll talk one. to you. I, have a safe we'll I guess uh, I'll talk to you guys in the new year. All right, see you, all brother. Right? Easy, Sammy. Easy. Brandon from Louisville is up next. What's up, Brandon? Nice for Sam to call before he goes to dinner. <laughs> what do you say? Nice for Sam to call before he goes to dinner. Oh. <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> uh, how you doing, man? Good, man. How about you? 
I'm doing all right. So <laughs> I've been thinking. Sorry, uh, I've been thinking. You know, year end coming up and everything. And so, question for y'all upon this is: y'all got some shows before New Year's, right? Uh, yeah. We come back on the 26th. Yeah, okay. 26, okay, 27, so 28, 29. We'll be here for four days. Four? Okay, so we can, we can worry about year end stuff there, but just something to think about. What's your big moment of the year? The return you know, of what's the one thing? RGSP, okay. Yeah, uh, that's, that's not a bad one, goes. I mean, it was really, really historic. I thought he was gone. It was really, really historic. He came back, he won the fight, he. But has already vacated it, and you know it's caused some waves in two divisions. Um, There's a difference. But it's though? also hard to top Connor and Floyd just because it's so outside yeah. the box, uh, and how monstrous it it turned out. Um, what I think he means, though, do you mean like when you just jumped out of your seat? Uh, yeah, I mean you can really define it anyway. My, mine's going to be just what's the biggest impact of this year. Uh, but what's the one thing that, that that's going to when you think 2017, this was the thing. Then it's got to be the Connor and Floyd fight because now we don't know what the hell's going to happen. But if it's the jump out of your seat moment, it's when Joanna got knocked out. Yeah, by that was shocking, man. It really was. That was a huge moment. Shoot, mine's easy. It's selfish. Being on Junkie Radio, being on MMA Junkie, that's that's, that's, that's going to be that's what I'm going to reference so in my personal history time continuum 2017. But, but yeah, you guys nailed it spot on as far as the general, general view. It's kind of hard to avoid those two. Yeah. How about you, Brandon? I, I, I'll take it a little different because I think years from now we're going to look back at 2017 and the lasting impact. It's going to be that holy shit moment where Francis Nagano, Nagano announced to the world he was truly a contender, and that's when he knocked over him out cold. Uh, I be. think that's going to be the moment where we go, this is where we knew this guy had it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the most beautiful KOs ever. Nasty, violent, I mean, on, on point and... Historic because he took out an actually really really good striker with strikes, uh, but we'll see because he hasn't fought someone of what you know the, the has a skill set of Kane, Stipe where you know they can wrestle fuck you you know what I mean <laughs> and really really steal your soul. Yeah. So uh, I know Stipe <laughs> likes to throw them hands you know but but how long do you really want to do that with Francis and Um when you have you know when you have a tool in your tool belt like like wrestling so. We'll see, man. But look, hey, how about the fact that when we come back, we talk about 219, Cyborg and home, and then we have about a week or two, and then boom, it's DC defending and Stipe defending. So, got you got you know you got to tip your hat to, you know, the UFC for not only getting that contract situated, and Ganu for the quick turnaround. Oh yeah, you know, and and next thing you know, we have ourselves a great tar- start to 2018, whereas 2017 started off really so slow because. 2016 was um, it was backloaded, you know. The all the stars fought at the end of the year. Bye. Next up is <laughs> DJ Tony. Well, he didn't say none. What's up, Tony? How you doing? Coming in at uh, Merry Christmas, gentlemen. Hey, uh, when I heard that Sam Samuel Double Jam was calling, I had to call in too. First and foremost, of course. Uh, it, listen, to Dan, Tom, I, my thoughts uh, and heart goes out to you for losing a friend and a mentor in, uh, in, in, in of course, uh, Robert Follows. But I just want to tell you guys, you guys are literally the best in the industry. You guys make my day every day when I listen to you guys, and I just want to say Merry Christmas, guys. Thank you, Thank you Tony. Tony, for the kind words. Thanks, Tony. Yes, and Merry Christmas to you and yours, right, buddy? All right, take care, guys. All Merry right. Christmas. See ya. Oh, Easy, Tony. Nobody had immortal words? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I guess. Let's do that. Let's take a commercial. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. When we come back, we'll talk to Lewis Smoka and Rick Glenn back-to-back, both fighting at UFC 219, Nicholas Matteo and uh, Miles Jury, their opponents respectively.
They can drink Mentos flavored Diet Coke without their stomachs giving a single fuck. They are gorgeous George and Goes. And this is MMA Chunky Radio. Your favorite holiday music channels are back on Sirius XM. You should check out contemporary holiday favorites on Holly Channel 70 and Holiday Traditions on Channel 4. You can get our complete lineup at SiriusXM.com slash holiday. All right, our next guest is Louis Smoka. He'll be competing versus Nicholas Matheo at UFC 219. These are flyweights that's weighing in at 125, probably rehydrated about 140. Maybe 145. We'll ask Lewis when he comes on. Lewis is eight. Uh, excuse me, 11 and four overall. But of his 11 wins, nine of them are finishes. So he has a really, really good finishing rate there. Uh, that would be close to 90, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, somewhere in that range. Uh, four of them have been via, via knockout. Five have been via submission. However, as of late, things haven't been going his way. He's looking to turn things around against Nicholas Matheo. He joins us now on MMA Junkie Radio. What's up, Lewis? How you doing? Hey, hey. Hey, thanks for joining us again on MMA Junkie Radio. Pleasure to have you. Uh, so, Lewis, look, there's there's no way around it. Obviously, uh, you know, you're probably fighting for your job here. Uh, luckily, you stacked up some nice wins to kind of be able to withstand uh, the, the streak that you're on, you know, on the losing side. But... Um, how you know? Are you putting that type of pressure on you? Because some people thrive on it, or are you trying not to think about it? Um, I'm not really thinking about it too much. Um, I'm just trying to go out there and win like every fight, you know. Um, I've kind of I've seen right now that no matter what, everything's gonna be okay. But I want to win just because I'm a competitor and I want to be champion. So if I want to be champion, I gotta beat this guy. It's that simple. Mm-hmm. You know, the last two guys couldn't even finish you, so you're hanging in there, you know, like I say, and one of them was a fight of the night, um, the one versus Elliot, the last one, so at least you were able to, you know, take take some, home some money, but what do you think you needed to change? What, when you got back home and maybe looked at the film, what stood out at you as you needed to change? Is it something within yourself, or uh, did you need new coaches, or did, did you make any changes? Um, basically, I just stopped drinking. Um, uh, like, I, I pretty much, like, I would get, like, pretty, like, blackout drunk, like, every night, because I was bored, and, I don't know, maybe I was just being a bit immature and going through some stuff in my own head, uh -huh. but I kind of just realized, like, like, I kind of did it, too, as, like, a way to, like, not really think about the fight, you know, kind of, like, relax, I guess, but, you know, who's just gonna have one, right? So, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, like, uh, party, man, so, like... Um, yeah, I don't know, it was just being, like, I don't know, irresponsible, or whatever you want to call it, but, yeah, I was, I was drinking way too much, and so, like, I kind of, like, I, I had to stop, you know, um, I had to stop drinking during fight camp, basically. I don't want it to come off as I'm, like, sober now, because it'd be just weird, but, yeah, I'm gonna drink after this fight, but just, like, I'm not gonna drink during fight camps too much anymore. Right. Okay, so that that answers my question. So you were actually drinking during fight camps, and just your recovery the next day would suck. Would, would you miss practices, or were you able to always get to a practice, but just be, maybe be sluggish? Yeah, I mean, I always made it to practices and stuff, but I always make weight. I was still winning, so. Oh wow! I mean, I've done that pretty much my whole career, so like I don't know. Did um, it? Yeah. Did the losses themselves teach you the lesson, or did you have to get a sit down from? teammates, family, coaches, anybody that you kind of had to, you know, get in your face about this, confront confront you? Um, yeah, Rylan and Charles had to yell at me for, like, a while after the last fight. They had to be, like, like I, I was like, I want to go up, wait, the weight cut is too hard. And they're like, no, you're a 25er, just don't drink. So I was like, ah, oh, fine. <laughs> I, um, I, and how, I just gave in. I was like, all right. So how have you felt? Uh, now that you've been doing a camp and you've been, you know, clean of alcohol? Um, I wouldn't say I've been clean, but, I mean, I feel way better. I mean, I have more energy. I can eat more. I don't have to, like, skip meals and stuff to drink. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I feel great, honestly. 
a lot of energy. I mean, I'm like lighter in the weight cut. Like, I feel pretty good. Lewis, let me I ask you one. <laughs> let me ask you one last thing, just because you're being so upfront and honest, and you seem to be taking all this in stride. Would you say you were borderline alcoholic or just a dude that parties? Like, was this an actual problem problem? I would say more with that party route, honestly, because, like, I knew what I stopped when I had to. Like, I just, I don't know, I was bored, man. Like, I just, I don't know, I just didn't want it to come off as, like, I'm, like, sober now and, like, you know what I mean? Like, because, like, I don't know, I did a couple of interviews and people were like, oh, um, like, oh, you know, I've been sober for, like, three years. It's great that you're sober now. Like, um, yeah, it's it's a battle every day. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, I'm not permanently sober, guys. Like, I don't want to be, like, some kind of, like, false idol or some shit. You know what I mean? Mm hmm No, I get you, man. Yeah, like, that's... Yeah. Louis Smoka, our guest here on MMA Junkie Radio. He'll be fighting Matias Nicolau at UFC 219. And these are flyweights mixing it up here. 125 pounds, to be more exact. All right, goes. What do you have for Louis Smoka? Lewis, when you envision this fight, when you break it down in your head, do you have multiple ways that you see the fight finishing, or is there one certain particular way that you feel you will finish this fight? Um, I tend to look for just, like, consistency, maybe. Like, when you watch tape and stuff, you see things that the guy does, like, repetitively, you know? And that fire like plays into your head, but I don't know, dude. When it plays out in my head, it goes all kinds of ways. It goes with all different scenarios. Is that kind of what the reason that you were saying earlier? Like, you like to do things that take your mind off of the fight. Yeah, definitely. That that stuff wears on you. Like, I'll be up all night, like just thinking about like different scenarios. Like, okay, if he throws the overhand right, that means I have to check with my left. And then what happens if he comes back with a knee off the block here, but then if I duck and if I roll this way, and then what if he throws a job and then I have to slip off, and then what if he throws a body kick? And, like, and then I'll just go like that for hours and hours in my head. So, like, yeah, that's not healthy when you're trying to sleep. All right, Dan Tom, what do you have for Lewis Smoker? Well, uh, on that note, Lewis, one of, the, one of the things I like when I'm watching your style, especially in the grappling, it almost seems like you're, you're comfortable with losing small battles in order to win the overall war. Um, that flowing type of style, does that kind of help you with this mentality of not trying to put the pressure and worry so much about what the next step is going to lead to? Um, maybe. I mean, I just do what feels natural, you know? Like, I just do what feels natural to me. I mean, it's kind of weird and not too many people have that style, but I just do what it's comfortable for me, you know? I got you. I got you. And then I guess my other question for you is in regards to Hawaii. I, that, that's where I'm from myself. And uh, believe me, I can I can understand when, when people say that there's certain distractions that other people might not realize will be distractions. And clearly, you know, you have your head about you. you you've addressed your, your issues as far as with, you know, alcohol and prior performances. But I got to be honest, my issue if I lived in Hawaii would be would be the food. Um, <laughs> uh, have, have you gotten that dialed in, dialed in uh, Louis, as, as a fellow Hawaiian? Yeah, um, I'm working with my girl, Kelsey Yeoman, right now. Um, she's been helping me out a lot, like, sending me, like, what I'm supposed to be eating, exact measurements and stuff, like, so, I mean, I've had it pretty dialed in. I'm lighter right now, like, I'm, like, four pounds lighter right now than I was the last time around, so that's pretty good. So, I guess just finishing that off, sounds like you have a good support system, obviously from Hoy Elite, MMA, Rylan, uh, you know, nutrition, obviously your family's out there, uh, you know, I... It looks like you're going to stay in Hawaii. Is this more just kind of addressing your own personal issues as far as getting the the best Luis Smoka in the octagon? I think so. I think it's just like, I don't know. I'm kind of a head case, as you guys probably can imagine. So I think a lot of it might be mental with me, like just kind of believing in myself and trying to stay confident. Um, you know, not needing to, like, run away from things. Um like kind of like you know just face battles head on and just try to you know see who wins and i don't know um i think it, i think it's all on me it's all on me i gotta i gotta be the one to step up this run of uh hawaiians that have been winning uh, you know uh, that uh momentum kind of carry over do you feel it is it inspiring you know uh, Things seem to be clicking for, you know, people from Hawaii. Uh, Rachel had a nice win. Max had a nice win. Yancey had a nice win. You feeling that love? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, definitely feel that love, you know. Um, I want to I wanna win, dude. I don't want to be allowed to drop the ball, honestly. 
<laughs> We're on a streak right now. We need to keep it going. Would you ever consider, like what Brad Tavares did, n maybe not relocate to Vegas, but do a fight camp in Vegas just to change things up? They got the UFC PI that's wide open now for any athlete to come in. Kendall Grove did that prior to, uh, you know, Brad Tavares. Uh, and then there's been some that have stayed on the island, like BJ Penn, uh, or, or been in on, on and off like BJ Penn and had success. But have you ever thought of switching it up like that? Mm, yeah, I mean, you think about it, like, we'll just, you know, go check out some other places, see how things are going and stuff, you know. I mean, I've thought about it, you know, I'm pretty close to, like, a few gyms, you know, I'm pretty sure I could go almost anywhere and it'd be, like, you know, I'd be welcome to open, open arms, so, you know. I've definitely thought about it, but, you know, I'm just trying to stay focused on the fight right now. It's, like, the biggest issue. It's, like, the single biggest thing I'm thinking about. Right. All right, uh, about Nicholas, uh, sorry, Matthias Nicolau. Uh, 14, sorry, 12 and 1 overall, 4 KOs for submission. So he's pretty well-rounded like uh, like you are. He's coming off of, uh, some yeah. wins here in the UFC, two in the UFC, Moraga being his biggest win. But that layoff, man, it's been a while, you know, that it, since he's been in there. It's because more than, more, than, more than anything what I hear from, even the fighters that say I don't believe in, in ring rust like Dominic Cruz, the one thing I do hear, though, is when the fight does start, uh, everything is kind of in slow motion, like they're timing their, you know, what what they're used to feeling, like when they're in there, it's just off. But because of that, like, do you plan on coming after Mat uh, Matthias, you know, with even more vigor in the first round? I mean, just a full, full on, full core press. Uh, I'm not too sure what I want. Uh, well, honestly, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to commit to anything to this on fight. You don't know what the guy's going to look like when you fight him. So I haven't really, like, fully committed to... Like, we have, like, a bunch of strategies, but I haven't really fully committed to one, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, we will probably see you in about a week. So whatever's left the camp, I hope you have a safe camp, uh, safe travels to the mainland here, and I, I guess we'll be seeing you in about a week. And I want to thank you for the time, and I want to wish you a, a Merry Christmas as well. All right, Merry Christmas, guys. All, All right. right, and I keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lewis. <laughs> Take care, man. We'll see you. Thanks, Lewis. I miss having the studio. Guys. All right, later. Yeah, when he was here, he was a character, yeah, wasn't he? Was he was fun. Uh-huh. All right, that's Lewis too. Smoker, folks. Big shout-out to Ed Cap for lining that one up. Um, I mean, that's what I would do if I was fighting someone off a long layoff is just take it to them. My combos are going to be crisper and sharper. Um... You know, and yeah, of course, there's a chance I might get clipped. I don't know, but Lewis, I've always felt like even from day one, the first time I saw him fight was I love the way he slip punches, mm -hmm. his head movement. Um, so I think he's someone that can go out there and put that plan to use and yeah. just see what the other guys got. You know what I mean? And um, it, at least create some doubt, win the first round convincingly, and then create some doubt going into round two. Yeah, he was my dark horse for a minute as far as, you know, contenders, him and Scoggins as far as contenders at flyweight, you know, with his, with his, with his, with his style and uh, that length and grappling. If he were to, you know, you do those hypotheticals, well, who, who could who could challenge Demetrius Johnson or who has an interesting style? Louis Smoko, you know, aside from his recent record, stylistically is one of those guys. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, he's got to put it together. Yeah, that streak is uh, something he's got to get over for sure. All right, are we ready to go, Danny, with our next guest? We are. All right, Rick Glenn is joining us now on MMA Junkie Radio. Let me tell you a little bit about Rick Glenn. Overall, he brings a record to the party of 24-1. and one. And in his stop at the World Series of Fighting, he was actually their featherweight champion over there when he took down Georgie Karakanyan at WSOF 10. Since he's come over to the UFC, 2-1 and one overall. He's riding a two-fight win streak. He defeated Gavin Tucker earlier this year, Philippe Nova before that. He's looking to go 3-0 oh in 2017. Again, you'll be fighting Miles Jury at UFC 219. What's up, Rick? How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Just finished up practice. Uh, feeling sharp. Everything's good to go. Right about now is where I hear people say we had our last hard practice. Did you have that yet? Um, no. I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm dialing back a little bit. Now, what does that mean for you? Because everybody's version of dialing back is different. Does that mean uh, less intensity intensity with strength and conditioning or smaller gloves with live sparring or just less rounds? What, what does uh, your version of tailing off mean? 
Um, yeah, less, I'd say less weighted stuff, maybe a little less intense, um, more martial arts, more precision, small gloves mm -hmm. stuff. Has it felt great to be in the UFC and kind of validate your career? You know, you had a great run at WSOF, and even prior to getting to WSOF, you were 12-2-1. But it seems like one thing that haunts anybody that's not in the UFC is, yeah, but how would you do in the UFC? You started off with a loss, but you rebounded with two wins. But how has that made you feel, and, and what's that done for your confidence? It's, uh yeah, you don't have uh, multiple losses in a row. You know, that's when I'd be getting uh, pretty nervous about my job. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident going into the fight. I like the matchup. My training's been going great. I love it out here at Team Alpha Male. Um, yeah, everything's looking pretty good. Was that a tough transition to go from the Midwest to uh, Sacramento? No. <laughs> Heck no. It's uh, it's nice and warm, you know, sunny here pretty much all the time. Um, right now in the Midwest, it's it's getting pretty cold and snowy, so I'm not missing that. What's the one thing that stands out from if you were to compare both of your gyms? I'm not asking you to slam your previous gym or glorify the first one, but is there anything that you just go, wow, you guys do something different here, but wow, it's made me better? Well, the gym I was training at in Milwaukee, uh, Pure Vita, BJJ, and MMA, and then there's a uh, Jiu Jitsu Academy 360, and then also Ben Askren's Academy. Um, the nice thing about here, you know, I, I have everything under one roof. I have a lot of guys in my weight class at a high level, so that was the biggest thing. I had a lot of injuries in the past from training with guys that were multiple multiple weight classes above me, and um, you know, maybe some people not as consistent or the level that you know, I need to be training with, so it's nice to have, uh, you know, kind of the complete package out here. What spawned the idea for you to move out? What, could it have been anything that had to do with former foe uh, Lance Palmer, or was it someone else that put that in your ear to come out to Team Alpha Male? No, I've, I've wanted to do it for a while. Ever since I started fighting, I followed Uriah, and, um, you know, I've always had it in my head to, to come out west and, um, you know, sunny California, and, it, you know, it finally worked out financially, and, um, yeah. Rick Glenn, our guest here on MMA Junkie Radio, he's fighting Miles Jury at UFC 219 on December 30th. Rick, how intense can it get on the mats out there? Because the other day, Uriah was even saying there were, like, 20 people at, at pro practice alone that were high-caliber athletes, most of them being in the UFC, um, I imagine it's just one beast to another. Can you can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we're always pushing. Um, you know, we're the name of the game, and you know, push it as much as we can and stay safe and all that. But uh, yeah, we go pretty hard and um, stay safe for the most part, I guess. And yeah, we do have uh, quite a quite a few people in our practices, pro practices. But luckily, there's enough room here at the new academy that we can accommodate everyone. So back-to-back -back wins, 2017, has been shaping up to be a great year. A uh, win here, how would that make you lay out 2018? Would you want to take a fight early in 2018 and keep the momentum going? And how do you stay out of being one of those guys that can uh, accumulate a very long streak but not get a title shot? Have you thought about how you would lay out 2018? Yeah, we'll see. You know, obviously I need to get the win, and then uh, we'll see how I walk away from the fight. You know, injury-free, I want to keep the ball rolling, and I'll fight as soon as possible and, and start knocking on the door for top 10, you know, top 8, top 5, and make, you know, keep climbing and make my run for that belt. You know, I, I can sense, you know, uh, that, that that's a smart way to go about it, especially if anybody who's seen you fight knows that you you give it your all, and you you know you're you're very talented in many areas where you can kind of take the fight wherever you like. But when you're sizing up Miles Jury, is there is there a certain read you have on him, or is that not your style? You just kind of not going to worry about it, worry about yourself come fight night. Yeah, I mean, I, obviously we're going to do a little research into our guys. We're at that that level, you know. We need to look into everything. I think and. Um, yeah, he's a long-time veteran. I know he's smart. He's got some, you know, octagon IQ as well. And, um, 
I think it's going to come down to the, whoever makes the most mistakes and has the bigger gas tank, um, you know, determines the outcome of this fight. Awesome. And one more kind of side note question, looking at your uh, Instagram here. It looks like you've been getting into some woodwork. Is that a, is that some kind of piece of mind work you've been doing on the side just to keep keep the mind off of fighting? Or? Uh, no, I've, I've, I've done some uh, woodworking stuff, gosh, ever since I was a kid. Um, we were always finding scrap boards and making ramps and doing tricks on our BMX bikes and stuff. But I got into doing some pallet projects because my wife, you know, on, on Pinterest, all these pallet projects look cool to all these women, but they kind of forget how hard they are to, to take <laughs> apart. But yeah. I, uh, I kind of got, I got it, you know, I got it down taking them apart, but I, I built a couple, um, launchers that uh they turned out really nice and are, are pretty comfy actually for some for some free scrap boards but yeah it, it's just little side projects i like to do i guess what's your proudest project ever a proud project oh uh we made a a 20 foot long by six foot um half pipe in our backyard when i was <laughs> when i was 14 that is and this sweet. was this was at a, this was at a duplex. We were renting both upstairs and downstairs, so this was a rental, and we built a half pipe, and it damn near took up the whole yard. Built a half pipe in the backyard, and it it turned out really good. My dad uh, he worked construction all of his life, and so we kind of he passed some of his skills down to us, and we got all the wood for free. Um, I mean, we had to pay for the screws, but other than that, we built a 20, 20 by six foot tall half pipe. <laughs> <laughs> what about your worst project? <laughs> What's that? How about your worst project? Do you remember what that would, would have been? Project? Oh, man. Uh, shit, I don't know. I made some crappy stuff before, too. <laughs> well, let me follow up on that. All right, Jim Miller... And his brother uh, and their dad were, um, you know, they were in the from the construction world. And so they were always building stuff. You know, I, I don't know if you want to call it a carpenter or just, you know, talented like yourself. You can build stuff. But, goes didn't Jim once tell us that he, he did a, a, the nail gun right through his hand? Yeah. So rather than a, a, a sorry project or a project that didn't go well, have you ever had any accident that you can look back on and go, whoa, you know, that, that was pretty gnarly? I didn't, uh, well, I, I fell off a roof a couple times roofing, and then I did have my, my brother, I was helping, handing him shingles, and, and he put a, uh, a nail from the nail gun through, um, the side of his toe, Ooh. big toe. Oh. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> yeah, and, were these, uh, one-story roofs he fell off, or two, or, I, I don't think, I, I don't yeah, think we'd be like, talking to you if there was three. Uh, yeah, three different incidents. Oh, three of them. The time I the worst, the worst, the worst I I fell off a uh, I don't know, it was like two story roof, not not too high, but big enough it would have messed me up. And luckily I fell on the pile of shingles and, and did a little jujitsu roll back to my feet. <laughs> kind of <laughs> took the momentum out of the fall. Wow! Did wow. you ever land on cement or anything like that? Where were the other ones? No, nothing like that. I fell into a. Uh, a trailer once <laughs> and then that kind of towards the end of my roofing career and and then we had moved to Milwaukee to to get some better training in for my fighting now would one say anybody that's listening to this from the contracting world would one say oh man yeah that happens to all of us or would one say this kid's clumsy no they'd probably say he should have been wearing a harness and <laughs> you know strapped in and whatnot but we weren't doing that. <laughs> What's the protocol on something like that? Because I love to laugh at my friends when they fall. Right. But how long do you have to wait before you can maybe giggle about it or laugh about it, Glenn? Oh, man. I don't know. The, the worst, the, the time I fell in, you know, fell into the pile and did a jiu-jitsu roll, I was like, I was sliding and I yelled, fuck, and... Everyone, you know, was quiet, and, and then I, I rolled, and it was like a pretty serious moment. I had to check myself, and luckily I wasn't hurt, and 
it wasn't it wasn't until like maybe an hour later everyone was kind of making fun of me about it back back so you were actually back to work you didn't even take the day off no heck no if i wasn't hurt i'm not taking the day off all right this, this guy's a tough cat. What about the trailer? Did you go through it <laughs> and land like on a receptionist, or did you land on it? No, it was just a, like a, a metal trailer full of uh, the junk. Oh. oh, you're thinking of like Johnny Knoxville going through a... Yeah, I yeah. thought it was like one of those, uh, you know how they set up a trailer, like and a that's, where the, that's where they have the fax machine, the yeah. coffee, the secretary, and everybody clocks in there or whatever I thought it was that kind of trailer I think this one's more painful Rick Glenn's kind of like mankind man he's taking some hits <laughs> yeah I was going to say the, the shingle one impresses me because I used to eat a dish called SOS which which stands for shit on the shingle yeah. but Rick Glenn actually ate shit on the shingle yeah, pretty much like, yeah I'm, I'm, now he's got me looking at all these woodworking projects these oh, are actually pretty cool they, yeah. so they're made out of pallets oh huh. very interesting alright yeah, three pallets I found behind a business we talked about everything for your fight, but we've taken up enough of your time. So just tell us <laughs> this: we we know you we know you plan on kicking his ass. Uh, what's the prediction? What round? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I I'm just gonna I'm gonna go to work and whatever round I finish him in, I'm, I'll be happy with, with whatever. I just I'm looking forward to the win. Is it safe to say you're looking to be the hammer and him to be the nail? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll leave it at that, man. Uh, hey, safe travels to Vegas. We'll see you in about a week. And uh, if we don't see you, Merry Christmas. All right, Merry Christmas. Thanks, guys. All right, we'll see you, Rick. Take care. Take care. Rick Glenn there, courtesy of Ed Cap. Took a while there to open him up a little bit, but we had a good time with them at the end when he kind of sidebarred into his other career. Those falls are no joke, though. Yeah. No. Like, that ink. I mean, unless you're falling, like, even if you jump. On your feet, right, and land like you still kind of feel that shock through your knees, your right. shins, and all. Yeah. I can't imagine actually hitting the ground. He, he was on three times. He was honest though, because someone who has to check had to check up and run a roofing crew at one time in, in, in my career is that uh, I had to check to make sure all those guys were harnessed because you always had those cowboys who were the old school roofers that just wouldn't would go up there with nothing on, and that's what would happen more times than not if they did. So uh, Ricklin was honest there about what he, he should have been to doing. Jump off the roof a lot when we were kids. What? Yeah, and it was only until. I like, I don't know if it was 8 years old, 10 years old. It was no problem, all right? And then I don't know if it was like, hey, the last time I was 11, now I'm 14. Or the last time I was 14, now I'm 17. All I know is that when I did it the next time, dude, I thought I broke something. Shoot, and after dude. that, I said, never again. <laughs> like, that was really, really brutal. Um, Daredevil, huh? But, uh, yeah. uh, you know, I, uh. I always had mad respect for one guy who took these hard hits. Uh -huh. And I know right away people go, Mankind? Or is it, uh, d you know, The Rock or whoever else was involved? You know, Black Bart, all those guys that took those Black big hits. <laughs> um, no, Shane McMahon, dude. Oh yeah, because he's an executive, right? No and chance. he's not the biggest That's cat out there, got. and he doesn't frequently wrestle. But when he did, he just kind of said, "I'm in this. I'm going all out." Like you know the saying, "If you're gonna be a bear, I might as well be a grizzly." Mm -hmm. He was a grizzly in his matches. <laughs> it's not often, but the ones that he's done have been pretty money. Like I've, I've always like. You know, if I ever ran into him, I always wanted to say, man, just salute. I'm not going to be a crazy fan or ask for a picture. Just salute. Those are some I wanna do epic that uh, falls you took. Yeah, to he gave Matt it all. Riddle. He's a billionaire. He doesn't need to do that no, shit. You he know? gave it all. Have you seen how well I, I need uh, to follow Matt up Riddle. more on him. I've heard he's really done well. Dude, he, he looks really good. I saw, like, something. I'm Is he WWE up. material? Yes. I would imagine so. See if we can pull something up. Okay. We'll play it on the screen. Riddle. Right now, we're going to take our last break. Right, Danny? We have one more to go. You do. All right, let's yeah. get this out of the way. I think we got one more call, and then we'll finish up with Riddle and some Merry Christmas wishes for everybody and whatever else is on our minds. All right, we'll be right back.
Yeah. Hey, idiot! Yeah, you! Can you please tap that rather large fellow on the shoulder and tell him it's time for more MMA Junkie Radio with Gorgeous George and Goes? Thank you! Alright, we're back, and a quick reminder to everybody... Even though we'll be on vacation, we have done some original content, pre-programming that will be available while we're gone. We'll be gone tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, and Monday. But we have original content for you, maybe one replay, and then we'll be back on Tuesday as we are uh, we'll be back for fight week. The day after Christmas, UFC 219 is later that week on Saturday, December 30th. So we only take Monday off and then boom, right back at it. On Tuesday, more MMA Junkie Radio to finish the year strong. But would like to wish everyone a happy holidays. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. This is true. And if you get a shitty present, let them know. Give them an ugly face. Like, man, what you talking about? All right, let's do one more call, and then we'll get on out of here. It's Joe from Houston. What's up, Joe? That's Mike in Houston. Oh, Mike in Houston. What's up, Mike? Hey, what's up, guys? Not much. How about you? Pretty good. Feeling the holiday spirit. I noticed my name was dropped earlier. <laughs> goes that ultimatum to Sam Alljam. Uh, he definitely made the right choice, not letting me house it. But yeah. it would be cool. You and Rifle Popeye are all wreck shop. <laughs> Dude, I'd love to rifle through his records and drink up his lick cabinet. <laughs> For those that don't know, Mike's a, a legend in his own right. He has come to a couple junkie gatherings. And he's a blast at about, uh, what is it, drink number four? And then after that, he just... He kind of disappears. He disappears. Uh, he turns into... A, uh, actually, a, a demon possesses him. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fun <laughs> ride. It's a fun ride with Mike from Houston. There are points in time... I know there's points in times where I considered stabbing him <laughs> uh, and just walking away. And then there's other times I just want to put my arm around him and do a shot with him. But he's a blast. Uh, how you been, Mike? Uh, not too bad. All right. You looking forward uh, to UFC yeah. 219? Yeah, I don't know if I'm feeling that one too much. 220 looks better. Now, if you take the stance, I'm not buying 219. I get it. I respect it. But does that mean you go to a Buffalo Wild Wings or you tell another buddy to get it and you walk in with a case of Heineken and split it with them? Because what you're doing is you're giving the bird to Habib. Uh, versus Barbosa, you know what I mean, and Rivera versus Lineker, and I thought that was one other good matchup. Uh, Conor versus Magny's on the opener. Uh, yeah, Conor Magny. So I, you know, there's a few fights you're turning your back on, um, and let it be known that Cyborg Home really does have the potential for fireworks. So again, is there an Ngannou or a Gagey, you know, or who, whatever else just happens to flow your boat? No, but. Just be careful of what you're turning the back your back to if you're a hardcore MMA fan. I mean, I'll still try to rope up a friend to go to Buffalo Wild Wings and watch it. Fair enough. All right, buddy. Well, good to hear from you, man. We got a yeah, close up shot. Yeah, that I order. Uh huh. You pirate you, but you, oh, but you still oh. watch them, huh? Nah, I nah, always always do the, the BWW or Twin Peaks or something like that. You haven't been kicked out of any. <laughs> <laughs> no, not recently. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right, my man. Have a Merry Christmas, all right? We'll talk to you soon. All right. Merry Christmas, guys. All right. See ya. <laughs> he's a character, isn't he? Yeah, he's kind of like the Tasmanian devil. Like yeah. There's a couple guys that they just crossed that bridge and, and <laughs> wow. Like Marcel from Houston. But he owns one. it. Something about least. Houston. Marcel from Houston, same thing. Marcel this close to shanking him one time. Because I don't know if he just really wanted to. Because he's like a brown belt or yep. something. So who's going to grapple him, right? But he does this arm move. Uh, he's like your pal, right? And so I don't know if he's waiting for you to kind of go, well, what if I do this? The next thing you know, you're choked out. Or I don't know. Or maybe he really is just your buddy. But because he's so light and he probably never drinks because he's always training. Mm -hmm. Just like two, three, and then poof, that's it. Gone. Sputtering, you know? All of our guests this week were Rick Glenn, Chris Cyborg. Uh, Louis Smoka and Daniel Cormier. That was quick. You want to say something yeah, real fast? That was fast. Yeah, about was ten quick. seconds. Uh, Five seconds now. How do we do on the uh, results? Can we assign? Just say what you beat us. Can you watch Natch and can you uh, watch you re it. record the over the top uh, podcast before Natch? Christmas? Damn it! Right. Right. 
folks. Happy Merry Christmas. Be champions. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs>